you know, the whole farming process or the crop production process was not that nice. Okay. But slowly, slowly, there, you know, started a proper, you can say, a proper high production of it. Okay. A high production started. And how did it start? It started because you can say the land area was properly cultivated. Okay. A proper cultivation did. So you can say from the year 1952 up till the year 2010, a lot of, you can say 25% increase was made in the overall cultivation. Why? Because now people started to do some practices that were very beneficial to grow crops. You're getting what I'm saying? <clears throat> okay, so you can write down what are those practices. Write down practices to make Or you can write down practices for better yield. Okay, what are the practices? So, the first practice is crop variety improvement. Okay, improvement in the crop variety. So, crop variety improvement. Then you write down crop production management. Crop production management. <clears throat> and the third one is crop protection match. Crop protection management. Rima, why have you not switched on your video? <clears throat> I will switch from my camera now. What? I will switch from my camera. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the first one. Have you written it up till now? Okay. Very good. Now let's talk about the first one, which is crop variety improvement. Now see, basically here, if the seed or if the crop that we are using if, if that seed of the crop will be good, will be, you know, having a lot of good character, then whatever will grow, the whole crop will be proper. And isn't it a lot of variety of characters will be there. They will be, you know, big seeds will be produced, nice fruits will be there. So this whole thing that we do before, you know, planting it, we call it as the crop variety improvement. Okay. So what we do? Basically here, the varieties or crops, you see, um, in like any type of plant, there are like many different varieties, isn't it? Some are, you know, tall plants variety, some are shorter plant variety, isn't it? There are so many plant varieties. So we choose the variety which is superior. What do I mean by superior? Which has the best characters which, you know, does not die easily, which does not get affected by microbes easily. So that is the high yielding or you can say superior variety. Okay. So you write down for crop variety improvement. For crop variety improvement. We use, we use the superior crop, we use the superior crop, which has, which has the useful characters, which has the useful characters, like what are those characters that we keep in mind when we are selecting a crop? So first of all, the crop should be disease resistant. Disease resistant. The crop should be disease resistant. After that, the crop should respond. Yes. Uh, can you repeat once again? Uh, I didn't hear it properly. Okay. Can you switch on your video? Yeah, ma'am. 
Yes, switch on your video. Yes, I'll be repeating it again. Okay. okay. So what I mean by this is that, see, whenever we have to do a crop variety improvement, we use a crop that is superior. Okay, we use or plant a crop that is superior. Now, a superior crop is a crop that has these properties or these characters. What are the characters? So the first character is disease resistant. The crop should be disease resistant. The crop should respond to fertilizers. Okay, then the crop should have um, high yield. Right? Then the crop should have high yield. The crop should be high yielding. Okay, and um, it should have high quality product. High quality product. Okay. So, whenever we are choosing a superior crop, we see all these varieties or all these characters should be there. Okay. Then only we will use it for agricultural purposes. Okay. Is it clear? Okay. Now, what do you people think is disease resistant? What is the meaning of disease resistant? Uh, you understand what is disease? Yeah. Okay, now tell me what is the meaning of resistant? Tell me what do you think the meaning of disease resistance is? It shouldn't be easy for it to grow diseases or spread diseases. Yes, yes. exactly. It, the meaning of disease resistant, it means that it will not catch diseases. It will be resistant or you can say it will not be harmed by the disease. Okay? That is disease resistant. Got it? Yes. Is it clear to everybody? Yes. Okay. Very good. Apart from that, see, there is a process that is known as what? Yeah. See, another thing which I wanted to say that, do you think it is possible for all these characters to be present in one plant? Is it possible? Like one no, plant is sorry. there that have all the characters. No. Right? Just like how humans, like for example, any human being, we are not all perfect, isn't it? Yeah. Even by the looks or even by the nature or everything, there is something that is lacking in every human being, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Same goes with the plants also. There are some characters which will be present and some characters which will not be present, isn't it? You understand this much? Yeah. Okay, very good. Tell me when you're done writing, then I'll uh, explain you the rest. See, I was thinking one thing that uh, whatever I will teach for today's class and whatever I have taught already, in the upcoming class, I will take sort of like an oral test, a quick okay, five to ten minutes oral test, okay? And everybody okay. has to answer, okay? Yeah, okay. Yes. And I will like, you know, not put it as a group question. I'll put the question and then I'll ask one person to answer it. Okay, if that one person does not answer, then it goes to the other person. You getting it? We'll do the yeah. passing the parcel of the question. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yes, yeah, so for that, it means that you people have to study the chapter, isn't it? Now, had this been a normal, like physical teaching, then I would have given you chocolates, but obviously, I can't since I live 
far away and I live behind a screen. So I will, I will, what, what should I do as a reward? You only tell me what should your reward be? See, you people will be giving the test, right? And you people will be working very hard for the oral test. So the reward should also be what you people want. Yeah, but right. already I got the reward. You're teaching me and you're also hard working on it. So what I want the reward. That's only oh, my reward. Ma'am, you oh can remember God. us in your duas. Oh, you people. That's the I best will... gift you can give, ma'am. Yes, oh ma'am. That's oh right. Are you people sure that you are in class 9? Are you people sure? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Why? It doesn't seem like you people talk like such grown-ups. Mashallah, that's so nice. You people are so sweet. Oh God, I love it. Okay, you're done writing up till now? Oh my God, yes, I just can't stop smiling now. Okay. <clears throat> okay, see. So what I wanted to say by this is that since one plant can't have every character, okay, since one plant cannot have all the good things. So what we try to do, we try to put every character into one plant. We try to do that. And how should we do that? It is done by this process that is known as hybridization. Okay. Hybrid, hybridization. This is that process that through this process, we can incorporate or introduce all the characters that we want into the plant. Okay. So you write down about hybridization. <laughs> okay. Hybridization is the method. Write down. Hybridization is the method. Hybridization is the method to introduce to introduce desirable characters to introduce desirable characters into the crop variety. Uh, Ma'am, can you repeat from the first? Hybridization is the process to introduce desirable characters into the crop variety. Done? Yes. Put a full stop and start a new line Say uh, and write down. It is done by it is done by Crossing, crossing two genetically TWO2, so crossing two genetically dissimilar plants. Two genetic? Two genetically dissimilar plants. Genetically dissimilar plants. So we do a crossing between them. Okay, and what is our aim? For example, like uh, here, we have taken four characters that are desired, like disease resistant, fertilizer, high yield, and high yield. So, for example, if there is one plant, okay, it has two of the characters, okay. Then there is another plant, it has two of the rest of the characters, okay. Now, what we do, we cross these two together, and the offspring or the new plant that could be formed it would contain all the characters. This is what the aim of this experiment or this process is. You're getting it? Yeah. You're getting why we are doing this? <laughs> so that? No. We are, see, we are doing this because, see, one plant contains some of the good characters, okay? Then another plant is there that contains some good characters. Now, we, if we cross them together, meaning we make them fertilize, then the new plant which will be formed after reproduction, okay, the new plant which will be formed, it will contain two good qualities from this plant, two good qualities from this plant. So, it will have four good qualities. It, will it be superior now? Right? It will be superior. Yes. 
So this process where we are taking two different plants with superior qualities and we are making them, you know, reproduce together. This is known as crossing. Okay. This process is known as cross. Is it clear? Yeah. Yes. Now, this crossing, this method of crossing is of two types. Okay. The first one is intervarietal. First is intervarietal. And then there is inter or interspecific. So, before writing this, you write down. The crossing is of two types. The crossing is of two types. A is intervarietal. B is interspecific. Okay. <clears throat> it can be interspecific or it can also be intergeneric. Okay, now I have few questions to ask to you people so that I'll know how much I have to make you understand. Okay, first of all, what is the meaning of inter? Uh, inter Inside? Center. Okay. See, inter, have you heard inter school, inter school competition? Yes. Ma what does that mean? That competition is between two schools, right? Inter-school competition. It is between two schools. So the word inter, it means between two. Okay, inter means between. Okay, now if you look at the first word, that is inter-varietal. Varietal is showing which, which type of word? It is denoting? Variety. Variety, very good. And inter denotes between. So, this inter varietal will be between two varieties. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Now, okay. Do you know genus and species? No, ma'am. I don't know. No, ma'am. Nobody knows that? Okay, see. <clears throat> genus. Uh, see, uh, how would I explain genus? Okay. Uh, there is plant kingdom, there is animal kingdom. Okay, plant kingdom contains all plants, animal kingdom contains all animals. Okay, so if we are talking about any genus, genus is you can say a rank. Okay, and it is a higher rank and species is a lower rank. You might have heard about this is a species of butterfly. This is this species of that butterfly. You might have yeah. heard this. Yeah, species. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, species is saying a type. Okay? So, if the crossing is in between two species, then that is interspecific. If the crossing is between two genus, then that is intergeneral. Okay? So, now you write down about intervarietal. Write down about intervarietal. You write there. The crossing between the crossing between two different varieties the crossing between two different varieties is known as intervarietal crossing the crossing between two different it has to be different it can't be same or else it won't be you know, crossing, right? It will, yeah. it will be something else. So it has, both the varieties have to be different. So that is why uh, crossing refers to, uh, crossing, uh, sorry, intervarietal crossing is the crossing between two different varieties. Okay? Then you write down about interspecific. Interspecific. It is the crossing between it is the crossing between two different species. Okay, two different species. But here, in the case of interspecific, the genus will be same. 
to two different species of the same genus. Okay, meaning under one genus, many species can be present. Okay, so this cross is between the two species which are different, but the genus of those species are same. Got it? Ma'am, I still don't understand genus. Yes, ma'am. The word genus yes, is confusing. See, uh, see, when we classify organisms, okay, we give them a scientific name, okay? And that scientific name tells us about the genus and the species. See, genus and species, both of them are, you can say, a rank. Like how first, second, third rank is there normally? Genus yes. and species are that rank. See, you can't understand genus and species without knowing it, you know, properly. But all that at this level, meaning in class 9, all that you have to know here is that genus and species, both of them are ranks. Ranks that we put the animals into. For example, mm, okay, there is Okay, I'll, I'll take this example. It will take a little while for you to understand, but try to understand. This is a little high level, okay? See, for example, if I talk about the scientific name of potato, okay? The scientific name of potato is Solana tuberosum. Okay, you don't have to remember the names, okay? Uh, tu tuberosum, okay? This is the scientific name of potato. Okay. Now, if I write the scientific name of brinjal, it is Solanum melongina. These are just the names. Okay. So, Solanum melongina. Now, let's see here. In this name, first name is of the genus and the second is of the species. Okay. These are rank. So here also you can see this is genus and this is species. Genus and species both are rank. So what, what is that one similarity here in the two names? Can you tell me one similarity? Yes. yes. Genus. 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 Hmm? Yes. The Solanum is repeated. Yes, the Solanum is repeated. So by this we can say that the potato and the brinjal both of them belong to the same genus, which is Solana. But yeah. they belong to different species. Potato is tuberosum species. Melon, uh, the brinjal is melongenous species. Now you're getting what genus and species are? This is the simplest yeah. way by which I can explain without confusing. Yes, is it clear now? Yes, yes. yes ma'am. Yes, very good. So basically, genus and species, both of them are ranks. Okay. Now, this is for the same genus, right? For the same genus, the different species are there. Same way, for example, if I talk about the scientific name of rose, okay, it is Rosa indica. Okay, this is the scientific name of rose. So now this is the genus name and this is the species name. Now, can you tell me the difference between rose and brinjal? What is the difference? Tell me the difference. Both of them. Both of them, yes. The genus is different and the species is also different. Yes, the genus is different, the species is different. Meaning, the rose belongs to a different genus and the brinjal belongs to a different genus. Now you're getting? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it clear now? Yeah. So, okay. yes. So, for example, huh? for a, hmm? okay. why are they ranked like this? Yeah, why are they yeah. ranked? What is the purpose of this one? Yes. Yeah, see, they are ranked for our ease to understand about them. When you will go in class 11, you have to study this in very depth. Okay, when you go in class 11. So, there you will find out there are not just two ranks. There are so many ranks. There is kingdom, there is phylum, there is class, there is order, there is family. Then comes the genus and at the last comes the species. Okay? So, right now they have just given you two things. But you have to study a big, big thing when you will go in class 11. Okay? This ranking is done 
so as to understand which family the, like how we say that the tigers and the lions they belong to cat family isn't it we say that they are like cats and something big cats or uh, carnivores they are this is a there is a reason why we say that okay and the reason is this category or this ranking okay okay it's 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 not for you to brainstorm on this because it will arise like more and more confusion for you okay but for now you just have to know that genus and species both of them are ranks okay some plants are there that can belong to the same genus and different species right if you if you want to like cross two potato plants together okay for example okay. i've taken one potato plant and i've taken another potato plant now if i want to cross them together to make a progeny progeny means offspring which is the new plant what will that plant be potato potato right it will be a potato only right so what we are doing here the genus is also same the species is also same Isn't it? Getting, getting my point? Yes, ma'am. Now, if I ask you to cross potato and brinjal together, what type of cross will it be? Potato and brinjal. No, potato and brinjal are being crossed together. Will it be intervarietal? Will it be interspecific or intergenus? Interspecific. Interspecific. The genus will be same for both of them. Yes, and since there are two different species, it automatically means that it belongs to the you know it I it it can belong to a same genus. Okay, so if like for example potatoes, potatoes are uh, let's say that it you know it is disease resistant. Okay, and let's talk about brinjal. So let's say that brinjals are mm, very tasty. Okay. or you can say that potatoes are very tasty and brinjals are disease resistant okay now i want to create a plant that is tasty like a potato and disease resistant like a brinjal i want to cross them two together hmm? so when i'm crossing them two i am doing interspecific crossing why because the species are different i'm doing a cross in between two different species but the genus is same So now you've understood. Yes, ma'am. But how how we cross this potato and brinjal? See, crossing is is a mechanism. We are just saying crossing. Crossing does not mean you'll put one potato here, potato plant here, brinjal plant here, and then you'll be like cross. No, that's not <laughs> not how it happens. Okay, we uh do a process wherein we make them reproduce a new organism. okay that is not for you to understand you just have to know that the word crossing means wherein we can introduce some characters from this plant some characters from this plant into a new plant okay crossing does not mean put one plant here put one plant yeah, here that i understood bro i'm just draw, asking draw like uh, and put a potato in brinjal how can a, another new plant can be grown just that was it, my question it can be grown it can be grown but uh yet again it is very high level topic for your you know class that is why i am not getting into it because you know you will require a lot of things to understand that i know that you will understand it but then you will forget whatever your class topics are okay so you know we do crossing we do crossing in between two different varieties so that is intervarietal crossing when we do it in between two different species then that is interspecific crossing and when we do in between two different genus then that is intergeneric crossing so for example if i want to cross the brinjal and then rose for example i the brinjal has the characteristic of being resistant to disease and the roses look pretty so i want a brinjal that is resistant to disease but pretty like a rose so i will cross them hmm? what kind of cross is this now intergeneric Varietal. Yes, very good. Varietal. No, but generic means they will have the same 
um, species, species, right? No, 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 no. If the genus is different, then the species will automatically be different. Okay. Okay. The species will only be, you can say, um, when the genus are together, like same genus are there, then the species of both will be belonging to a same genus. But if the genus between two plants are different, then there is no connection in between. Got it? So now you've understood very clearly, I hope so, intervarietal, interspecific, and intergeneric. Is it clear? Yes, yeah, that's clear. Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. You don't have any doubts? No. I can see your faces. I can see that many doubts are there. You still want to know many things about it, isn't it? Huh? You're very yeah. curious, ma'am. What else? What else? What else? Yes, but I will not tell you what else. I, I have to, like told you ample amount. Okay, the thing that I have told you is that clear? Yeah, he is. All right, very good. Now coming back to the topic, uh, I've made write about interspecific. Now you quickly write intergeneric, the cross between two different genes. Let it down. The cross between two different genes. I'm so curious, Jimmy. Hmm. I can understand that. It's very interesting to know. Okay? <laughs> See, after your syllabus is done, when I'm done completing all of your chapters, then we will schedule one class wherein we will discuss all sorts of things that are not in the syllabus. Related to the study only. Okay, yeah. like whatever doubts you have, whatever imaginative things you think about science and biology, you can ask. Okay? Yeah. Okay, we will do that once the syllabus is completed. Okay, so you've written up till now? Yeah, I have written. Okay. So, uh, this hybridization is one, like, first method to get the type of crops that we want. Isn't it? We are doing a crossing so that whatever qualities we want gets into the new plant. Now, another method by which we can get the plant of our desired characters is by genetically modifying the crop. So, the second method of getting the desired crop is genetically Or you can write down genetic modification. Genetic modification of plant. Okay. Now, see, here's what happens. Now, we are not discussing about hybridization. Hybridization, we have done. Okay. Now, see, if there is a plant and it has many characters, but there are some characters that are lacking. Okay, now we want to introduce those characters in them. How will we do it? We will modify the gene. Okay, we will modify the DNA of that plant. And when that modification of DNA is done. Hmm? DNA? For DNA cells, uh, I know, yes. but uh, like I never every, know about it. Every organism has DNA. Okay, plants also have DNA. So the DNA no, of the no. plants, they get modified, okay? And by modification, then we can introduce new characters. And this is known as genetic modification of plants, okay? This is another method through which we can do the crop variety improvement. Is it clear? Do you have any doubts? No. All right. Very good. Now... Um, See, after, like, for example, we have done the hybridization and we have also used another method, which is genetic modification. Okay. Now, whatever new plant is formed, we need to test that plant, right? Whether it is living properly, whether it has all the characters that we wanted. We have to test that plant, isn't it? Before commercializing it. Before, you know, selling it in the market, we have to see how 
it works in the environment isn't it yeah yes because always for you know release of any product we have to test it before releasing it into the market right so same goes for all these plants also okay now how would we check let's see uh, you write down some of the but i uh, some of the factors respond uh, some of the factors variety improvement are done for factors for which variety improvement is done let us see what are those factors so have you written this okay uh, uh, did you people write anything about genetic modification of plant have i made you write anything no no no, no. okay you write down it is another method i'm sorry for this because you know i i remember just now back in my school when we used to you know make notes and the teacher was reciting and she did some mistake and then we had to rewrite it again i felt so angry like oh i have to rewrite it again that is why i am apologize all right so you write down under genetic modification of plant it is another method it is another method of improving the crop of improving the crop by introducing a gene it is another method of improving the crop by introducing a gene that would provide that would provide <clears throat> the desired characters okay in genetic modification we do that then ma'am can you repeat after improvement of crop i see uh, when i recite things i think from my brain and i recite them and then when you ask me to repeat it again it goes off my mind see uh, it is another method of improving the crop variety by introducing a gene that would okay. provide the desired characters that would provide the desired characters done yeah okay now let's come to these factors factors for which we do the crop or variety improvement we do it for the first one first one you write down high yield or higher yield can somebody explain what is higher yield uh, for more production of crops it is more and more production of crops that is higher yield we do the variety improvement for higher yield and after that the second thing we do it for is improved quality okay we do it for improved quality like for example if we are talking about like a wheat plant okay we use wheat to make rotis right so if the wheat will be good then the rotis that we make will be good right yeah so that is why improved variety okay then uh, <clears throat> under the improved variety you write down the example example is baking quality baking quality in wheat 
This is the first example of quality improvement. Okay, baking quality in wheat so that whatever rotis that we make or whatever breads that we make, they make like they they'll be good. So baking quality in wheat. After that, you write down protein quality. Protein quality in pulses. Isn't it? We say that dal, it is a very good source of protein. Isn't it? So obviously the protein quality in pulses, that also has to be improved. And then oil quality. Oil quality in oil seeds. See, whatever oil that we use, like uh, refined oil is there, mustard oil is there, all of those we get from seeds, right? Seeds are used yes. to extract oil. So the oil quality should be very good for the cooking purpose, isn't it? That is another yes. thing. Apart from that, you write down preserving quality. Preserving quality in fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. So for all these good qualities and improved qualities, we do the variety improvement. We do the variety improvement for more and more production of crops. So are these points clear to you? Yes. Okay, very good. Now the next reason why for which we do the variety improvement is for biotic and abiotic. Resistance. Biotic and abiotic resistance. What is the meaning of biotic and abiotic? Ma'am, even I don't know. Okay, tell me. Anybody else? What is the meaning of biotic and abiotic? Um, I forgot. Like, I've heard this type of names, but uh, I never know what is it. Is it something about the the way like land and water? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, sorry. See, bio, don't be sorry for it. It's all right. At least you tried. See, biotic and abiotic. When I tell you the meaning, you people will be like, oh, no, why, why didn't we know about it? See, biotic means living. Abiotic means non-living. Okay. <laughs> Do you people know what living and non-living things are? <laughs> are you living or non-living? Living. Are you sure? <laughs> okay, yes, okay, okay, good, good, good. I'm happy that you're sure. So see, the resistance to biotic and abiotic things. Now, abiotic things like resistance to high temperature. Okay, resistance to water logging. All of these are abiotic resistance. Then biotic resistance is resistance to disease causing microbes. Okay. So this is biotic resistance. Then that the, the things meaning resistance to the non-living things such as temperature, high wind, water logging. All of these are the abiotic resistance. Okay. And biotic resistance is not only the resistance to just microbes. Then have you seen that there are some caterpillars and worms that eat the leaves? Yeah, yeah, I see. They are in one way destroying the plant, right? Yeah. Yes. So the plant should have resistance to those also. So that is biotic resistance. Okay. 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 Have you have you people understood what this point is about? Yes. Yeah. Do you have any doubts? No. All right. So apart from this, see, um, in the abiotic, there comes drought. Drought is there. Flood is there. Okay. Then there is uh, salinity. Salinity is there. Okay. These all things, they come under the abiotic resistance. Like how I said, water logging. Water logging was there. Okay. All of these factors, if the plant is resistant to this, meaning when even if it is water logging condition, meaning water has been stagnant for a while, and even then if the plant can survive, then that means it is abiotic resistant. 
that plant is resistant to all these conditions. Now, if I'm talking about <clears throat> the biotic, so if it is microbes or if it is insects, okay? So if the plants are resistant to the attack of these two, then it means that the plant is biotic. It has biotic resistance. Is it clear? Yeah. So now you people know what biotic and abiotic are? Yeah, I understand. So you people are biotic or abiotic? Biotic. Biotic. Very good. Okay. So um, let's leave it till here only. And in the next class, we'll begin from the next point. Okay. So okay. up till now, you can check in your notes. Do you have any doubts? You can ask. Okay. Yes, check once and tell me if you have any doubts. Uh, no, ma'am, I don't have any doubts. Nobody has any doubt? No, ma'am. No doubt. No. Oh, very good. All right. So then that is it for today's class. And if even if you do have any doubts while you're reading the chapter, just like, you know, write, write down those topics. I will explain in the next class. Okay? Okay. Okay, ma'am. Yes. And another thing, Reema, why don't I ever get your homework? Um, ma'am, this uh, day is like, uh, I'm sick, not even that. I'm having a lot of work to do. Okay, see, so whatever homework, like it is always like two to three questions. So you people should answer those questions, click a photo of that page and then send it, okay? So that I can check and see that you are doing and don't copy it from book, okay? Write the homework as what you think the homework should be, okay? okay. Um, All right, so yes. Was anybody saying anything? All right. Okay. So my biotic people, now you you can go. We will meet in the next class. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And, be and be prepared for the oral test. Okay. Okay, ma'am. All right. Bye. Okay. Good night, everybody. Bye. Okay. Oral test. This one. This one. Up till now. Okay. This one only. And if you want to prepare tissues also. Fine, then meaning me making double duas for you. Okay, um, so let's do 